Hi, my name is Tuans. Hi, my name is Elise. And today we will show you how to package Ghost Script. Maybe you don't know that, but starting with the Ghost Script 10.01, which was released on March 27 in 2023, it is no longer possible to install Ghost Script silently under the free GNU GPL Affero license, making a lot of IT administrators angry. And this is a big problem for organizations, but I think Artifacts, which owns and fully controls their open source GoScript product, does not fully understand the scale of this problem, which causes a lot of organizations to spend extra time and money figuring out how to solve this sudden issue. But uh, why did Artifacts remove the silent installation from the free version of the GoScript installer? And yes, they only removed the silent installation option from the free GNU GPL license. However, silent option is still available if you purchase their commercial license. To find the reason for that, we did an investigation starting with their bug tracking forum. In this video, however, we will focus on our best solution how you can overcome this issue by packaging the free version of the Ghost script and deploy for all your endpoints using deployment solutions like Configuration Manager or Intune. If you want to know more, read our blog post that I will link below this video to learn more about our findings and why we think that every software that is available for free must have a silent installation option and that we think Afero made a mistake by removing the silent installation switch from GhostScript. But now let's see how you can use Master Packager to repackage GhostScript into an even higher quality installer than the vendor provides themselves. This, your own created package, will not let you down. Take it over, Edis, and show us how to do it. Okay. So. Before actually beginning packaging, uh, we need to do the evaluation first. And I think Tom's going to explain a bit more while I'm doing it. So what we usually do when we try to understand how to better package applications, we take a clean virtual machine where we take and install the actual vendor provided uh, software using their installer by double clicking. And then we see what is actually changing on the system. As Eddie just showed how to install it, we then uh, use a free software called uh, Uninstall View, where we see what was just installed. Maybe there's some other dependencies that were uh, installed. So Eddie, what do you see there? Yeah, so here we can see that uh, the application that installed is actually an exe installer. We don't have an MSI already. And we can see that it installed one dependency, uh, Microsoft Visual C++ 2015 to 2019. And this is important to know uh, before actually starting with repackaging because you should not capture the dependencies inside your package. Yeah, and separating dependencies is a crucial for enterprise deployments. So every dependency application that is a dependency should be packaged into separate package and deployed as a prerequisite for the main application if you want to wrap dependencies together with the main application someone may think it's actually easier or more efficient packaging process however when you look at application management system you can see that applications even dependencies get updates and updating dependencies to the newer version if it's delivered together with the main application will be troubling uh, it will be very hard to identify that you have such outdated dependency installed as well as it will make the whole application management a big mess for you and your colleagues. So remember, always separate applications and package them independently. Then use your deployment system to connect the main application with dependencies. This will make your management much easier and your environment safer. Right, it is. Yeah. 
Uh, one example I can mention now is that if you would in include this Visual C++ installation uh, inside your package, we already know that there are newer versions that are 2022 and you would try to install your package and it would fail because it would say already a newer version is installed. So it's a good idea to not include them and deploy them separately. It's going to be a lot easier. So, but when repackaging, we like to use the same dependencies uh, that were included in, in the main installer. So we know when we package it that something will not be captured from the from it trying to install the older version. So uh, in this case, it was installed from the installation directory from the program files, but uh, once it finishes installing it, it removes it. So how we can find it? Sometimes applications will extract the dependencies into temp folder. Uh, you can look into there, but only while it's installing. After it's done, it's going to be deleted. Uh, but in this case, I can show you a neat trick where you can just right click, open uh, the exe with 7-zip, and we can find the Visual C++ here. So uh, let me quickly revert my virtual machine, and we will begin packaging, and we will install this dependency before it. Okay, so the virtual machine is reverted now. Uh, the first thing we need to do, we need to install the dependency first. So let's just double click it and install it. So that's done, as easy as that. Next, we launch Master Repackager. We will create the snapshot. And then we will install Ghost Script. So as you know, it will scan just uh, everything in the system, all the registries, all the files, and make a snapshot of them and then we will install our application create the second snapshot then it will compare the differences between them and show uh, what new files and registries were uh, present on the system and we always recommend this doing repackaging on a clean virtual machine so the more things you're going to have on your pc or your or on your vm the longer it's going to take so the cleaner the better and the less uh, noise you will have inside your package. So don't have uh, any background running processes that would uh, interfere with your package. So let's just install it. Another thing to keep in mind is that never ever launch application during capturing process. It will create a lot of um, noise files or and registries that you really don't need for your application so remember that uh, even if you are tempted to find where some configuration is stored and for to do that you need to open the application skip that part just install do not open anything even internet explorer anything keep it uh, really simple capture everything, clean up the package, build the MSI, and only then find where the configuration is stored and use that as a separate file or registry that you put inside the MSI. This is really important um, and make your packaging much, much cleaner and much faster. Okay, so now we have captured both uh, snapshots. We can uh, click on manage files to see what was actually captured. So. We can see there was one folder and uh, under program files, that's the ghost script folder. So we don't need these files here. We can remove them because that is the legacy uninstaller and the dependency that we already installed. So, and here we have two shortcuts. We have the uninstall shortcut. We're not going to need that anymore. And we have the shortcuts for the application. So that is fine. So let's check the registries, what was captured. You can see there was one per user registry key captured. Uh, we usually try to exclude these as much as possible. Uh, this, this depends on uh, each different application. So usually you can just remove them and the application will generate uh, those registries back on the first launch. So we always try to do that first. So in this case, I'm going to exclude them. Let's check what was else captured. So this is the vendor of the Go script. So that looks fine. The installation directory, some DLLs, and we have an environment variable. So that's fine. So let's click on done. Um, 
we can see that it has detected automatically that it's going to be 64 bit. Uh, there was no uh, icon for the uninstall, so we can change it manually. Let's choose this one. So we have a nice, beautiful icon. And that's it. We can press on build. Let's open up our package and check what was built. So let's check the files. Here we have just the installation directory. We have a few registry keys. That's fine. We have our shortcut and we have our environment variable, which is configured to be appended at the end of the value. And during uninstall, it will be removed. So that's fine. The next thing we would do is we would take our package and we would wrap it using uh, PSADT. In this case, we use master wrapper for it. It's going to be a lot easier and quicker to do it. So we can just drag and drop our MSI file. It will fill in the information. In this case, uh, and we add the installer here under in the action section that will add the install, the uninstall, and the repair actions. And here we can add applications that uh, will be uh, that will notify the user to close these applications if they are running. So this will be done before installation, before uninstallation, and before repair. So that's fine. Let's save our package somewhere. So let's call it Ghost Script. Yes, we need to open the files folder and we need to add the installer here. And then what we would do if we would need to get this package into Intune, we would just right click it and click on the PSADT to Intune Win button and that will generate an Intune Win file for you. The only thing I would recommend uh, for Intune as well is to use serviceui.exe. You can uh, Google it, uh, you know, some blogs about it. This will allow you to have interaction in Intune deployments because by default you will not see those windows that you see during uh, installation of the PSADT. Uh, so, and let's test our package. Uh, we will take our package, revert the virtual machine, and we will test it. Be right back. Okay, so we are back and the first thing you will need to do again is to install the dependency because it will not be included inside the package. You should always install the dependency separately. So let's take PSExec. It's a tool from Microsoft that allows you to install, not install, to run the application with the system account. So that emulates the SCCM or Intune installation. So we just need to use the slash SI options, which stands for system and interact. So interact means that you will see the windows. If you do not uh, add the I or for interact, you will not see the windows that ask you to close the applications, etc. So then let's just take the deploy application exe and let's press enter. Accept the terms. That's fine. Okay, we have our install. This can be configured, uh, the default interaction or not. OK, so we have a zero, which means our package was installed successfully. Let's open up and remove programs. We have our MSI installed here. Let's check the we, we have the shortcut. We have a shortcut here, so that is fine. And the last thing we need to check is that we still have the environment variable. So set path, uh, we have it here. That seems fine. And then we need to test the uninstall as well, which we can use just the uninstall argument. And we can as well test if the app, it asks us to close the application. Just leave it open. And here we see the pop-up. It's asking us to close the application. Let's press close. So let's wait a bit. So it's removed. 
uh, folder is gone. We have exit code zero, and we need to check if the environment variable was removed correctly. So we do not see the GS anymore here. So that's fine. And it's as easy as that. Great. So hope you learned something new. Now you know how to get Ghost script for all your endpoints by repackaging it. Have a great day and see you in our next series. Bye. Yeah. Thanks. Bye.